I was sitting in history class thinking of what to do to get my teacher to stop talking about, well, history. Like, I'm sorry, why would I want to know about Alexander Hamilton when I could be playing basketball right outside this classroom? If you like this video, remember to hit that like button and turn on post notifications so you never miss another insane story. I tapped the girl in front of me on the shoulder and a wink told her what I wanted. She ripped a few pages out of her notebook and handed them to me with a smile. I opened my bag without my teacher seeing me. If he had seen me, he would have immediately known what I was up to. I ripped the paper into little bits and soon enough I was shooting little goopy paper balls, not at my teacher but at the ceiling right above him. I then asked for permission to go to the bathroom. He handed me my hall pass, but before I left, I gave the wall a little punch which shook the ceiling above and the paper balls rained down, getting stuck to my teacher's bald head. The class erupted in laughter as I ran out of the classroom before my teacher could get me for what I did. I did stuff like this in pretty much every class. Sometimes it was pretending to be dumb, sometimes it was the classic paper plane, and sometimes it was playing an obnoxiously loud video on the smartboard. I only got into real trouble once, and when I did, my entire class protested to get me out of detention, saying the teacher had no need to be so rude when he told me off. I was pretty much golden at school, not having to put in any effort and just passing my classes. I never thought it would all catch up to me, until it finally did. I heard my name being called on the intercom. Jason B, please report to the principal's office immediately. Rang through the halls. Everyone turned to look at me, some just about ready to come with and defend my honor. I walked into the colorful office our principal worked from and sat down in one of the chairs in front of us. Jason, it's about time you start worrying about your academic future, she said. Not to toot my own horn, but this is a pretty great school. The vast majority of our students pass their classes with flying colors, and you're way below average. We're gonna have to ask you to switch schools, honey. I was shocked. They were kicking me out to improve the school's average grades? I didn't know if I should feel worried or insulted, so I chose something in between. The principal told me it would take endless hours to catch up to the lowest grade they would let me stay with. God, I really didn't want to switch schools or tell my parents about this, but I also didn't want to do work. I had to figure something out and quickly. That weekend, I was helping out my dad at one of his open houses. He was getting a shipment of rented furniture to make it look more cozy for possible buyers, so he needed me to help him put everything where it belongs. So, how's it going with school, kid? He asked when we were done. Um, it's going, I guess, I replied. He knew I was never great at school, but he didn't know I was at risk of expulsion. Do you have a lot of homework, or do you have time for one more stop? He asked next. I told him I was always down to spend time not doing homework, and then we hopped back in the car and he drove a few minutes out of the city. He parked in front of this huge abandoned warehouse. It was absolutely massive. There were broken windows and doors everywhere, which we had to clean up. God, I don't know how I'm ever going to sell this place. My dad sighed. He said it had been on the market for ages, with not a single interested person. As I looked around, an idea started forming in my head. This place had a lot of potential. Big open spaces, concrete walls and floors, random slabs of concrete that would work as tables or chairs. This right here could be the greatest party spot in town, and maybe a party was just what I needed. You see, everyone in my class was stressed as hell for this huge exam we had coming up. I figured that all I needed was to distract all these nerds and keep them from studying. If they put in the same amount of effort I did, there was no way they still aced the exam, right? I spread the word at school that I was throwing a huge party. I told people to invite friends, friends of friends, and friends of friends of friends. No one in my class, maybe not even in my school, threw parties. They were all a bunch of nerds. A cousin of mine hooked me up with some lighting and speakers. Plus I got some chips and soda and I was ready for everyone to show up in the warehouse out of town that we would never get caught in. I waited and waited, but it was getting kinda late and nobody was there yet. Was I just wasting my time? Did these kids really ditch the first party in their high school career to study? Then, in the distance, I saw lights approaching. Tons and tons of lights. Over a dozen cars parked in front of the warehouse. We read online that it's cool to be fashionably late, said the first girl to get out of a car. Damn, these nerds even studied parties. People poured out of the cars and soon the huge warehouse was absolutely full of people. Everyone was dancing or at least trying to. The music was so loud, you couldn't hear yourself think. In fewer words, it was awesome. 
I have no idea what time I got home that night, but I slept the entire day and went to school the day after not having studied a single thing. It was me, my blue pen, and an energy drink against the world. The halls were filled with panicked people. They were all cramming the material last minute. But if there's anything worse than cramming, it's panicked cramming. None of that info sticks. I swear I heard more than one little sob in the still classroom while we took the exam. When people spilled out of the room, I was surprised. They were all laughing. Some were laughing hysterically. Ah, the first failure effect. When you fail something so badly that it's quite literally laughable. I've been there. When everyone saw me, they flocked to me, asking when the next party was. If I kept this thing up until the end of the year, I could lower their grades so much that mine were almost good in comparison. When we got our exams back, I didn't even have the lowest score. But I did realize there was one problem, one tiny thing I failed to consider. Derek. Derek was a textbook nerd. Bowl cut, little bow tie, and thick rimmed glasses. He was the top of the class and my one obstacle now that I had everyone else addicted to partying and having fun. I couldn't even have fun at the parties now though, because these kids were going wild. They started dropping bottles all over the place to calculate the velocity at which they hit the ground or something. And one of the idiots forgot later and tried to do the worm on the floor that I hadn't had the chance to clean up yet. Don't worry, he was fine. They managed to grab him right before he hit the floor, but he didn't get why they stopped him and got all angry. The kid then ran out of the warehouse and plunged into the river. Everyone went looking for him, which was cool because it gave me some time to be everyone's maid and clean up the glass. But then they wanted to make a fire in the middle of the warehouse. The kid somehow managed to grab this huge fish from the river, and after everyone inspected it and decided that it was not, in fact, poisonous in any way, they went back to their roots as cavemen and decided to cook it. Now, imagine a bunch of excited and sweaty teenagers staring hungrily into the flames waiting for a fish to cook. I thought I was losing my mind. I had created monsters, and I had to clean up after them. Even remembering it gives me a headache. I would much rather think about Derek, even though that gives me a headache too. After some careful observation from afar, I discovered that Derek was a huge mama's boy. She bought all his clothes, she cut his hair at home, and she sat down with him while he did homework. She was a college professor and had been top of her class all throughout her youth. Okay, maybe my observation became a tad stalkerish in the end, but it was all for the cause. I was willing to put all the effort in the world into avoiding putting effort in school. Hey, Derek, buddy, I said, running up to the kid and throwing an arm over his shoulders. I haven't seen you at my parties, pal. What's up with that? I asked. He sort of panicked when I approached. He started muttering something about his mom not letting him go to parties, that she said they ruin your life and that teenagers were monsters. Nonsense. Why don't I pick you up tonight and bring you as my guest of honor, bud? I suggested with my most charming smile. I actually have horse riding lessons tomorrow morning, so I must be in bed by 8 o'clock. He started to drone on before I interrupted him and told him I'd pick him up at 10. He protested, but I patted his back and went to talk to other people. I was sitting in my car outside Derek's house at 10 o'clock sharp that night, but the lights were off. I beeped my horn a couple times, but nothing. I finally decided to get out and go knock on Derek's window. It was thankfully on the ground floor. I knocked a few times and he jolted awake. I waved and smiled as he rubbed his eyes and came up to the open window. The second it was open, I climbed inside. What are you doing here? It's past my bedtime, he said. I told you I was picking you up at 10. Chop, chop, get dressed, I replied. Then there was a soft knock on the door. Derek, sweetie, did you have a nightmare? Why are you awake? Asked his mom through the door. Yes, I did, mother. I'm going back to sleep now. He responded. He started pushing me to the window, but I couldn't let him continue being a fantastic student. You think I'm gonna let my best friend waste his Friday night like this? I whispered to him. He stopped pushing me and his eyes went wide. I'm your best friend? He asked. I swear, his lip quivered a little. Yes, now get dressed, bestie, I whispered back. He got dressed at record speed, but he knocked over a stack of books. His mom suddenly opened the door and her face went sour when she saw a second teenage boy in her son's bedroom way past his bedtime. You stay away from my boy! She shouted as she lunged at me. I swerved her just in time and motioned at Derek to climb out the window. His mom ran after me through the house. I managed to run circles around their kitchen island while she chased after me. I was having fun with this crazy lady shouting all sorts of stuff at me, but I drew the line when she started reaching for kitchen utensils. I was not about to get stabbed for Derek. I ran out the front door with her still hot on my tail. Get in, get in, get in! 
I shouted at Derek when I got close to my car. I locked the doors just before she tried to open Derek's door, and we sped right out of there. That, Derek said while panting, was the most fun I've ever had in my entire life. The kid smiled. I told him the fun was just starting. I had no idea Derek would be such a party animal. By the end of the night, people were carrying him on top of the crowd and chanting his name. The kid was in heaven. I was having a blast too, for once, until red and blue lights started flashing and sirens approached. Everyone scattered. I grabbed Derek and we sped out of there in my car. I saw that some kids were being shoved into the back of cop cars, but somehow they still looked happy. They were still having the time of their lives, though to be honest, I'd be crying. Derek and I woke up around noon the next day. He didn't want to go back to his house, and my parents didn't mind him crashing in the guest bedroom. While we had breakfast, my dad came out of his office, smiling from ear to ear. Some kids got busted throwing a huge party in my warehouse. Now some millennials want to turn it into a club. I sold it, he exclaimed. I congratulated my old man and was kind of proud that I helped somehow. Only downside was, now I would have to look through his files to find someplace else to throw my parties. Cause my classmates were not nearly done partying. Even the ones that got arrested wanted more. I was amazed at the effect I had on these kids. Now it wasn't me disturbing class, it was them. They got busted for doing graffiti on the school walls, for clogging toilets on purpose, and for releasing the frogs we were gonna dissect all over the classroom. They were vandals. Thankfully, they were vandals who were sorta of flunking school, so in the end, things worked out in my favor and I didn't get kicked out of school. Was it all worth the trouble? Maybe. It definitely made school a lot more interesting.